Hello and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple A Day. This episode continues my series on logical functions in Apple Numbers. Today I'll be covering the switch function. So the switch function lets you check a value, usually the contents of a cell, to see if it matches one item in a list of possible matches. If a match is found, then a corresponding value is returned. This is much easier to explain with an example, so let's do that now. I've got a numbers document open containing some sample data. In this first column, titled Result, I've got a list of numbers ranging from 1 to 4. Let's just assume that these values are the result of some other formula. And let's say we want to display some text in this result switch column that'll correspond to the numeric value from the result column. So in the first cell, I'm going to type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. And then I'll type in the function name switch and press return. And you can see it takes three parameters. The first parameter is the expression or the value to be tested. The second parameter, called the switch value, is compared against the expression from the first parameter to check for a match. If a match is successful, then the third parameter, if match, is returned. So for the expression, I'll select the first cell from the result column. I'll press tab to move to the switch value parameter. So I know I'm going to be testing the numbers 1 to 4. So I'll type in 1 for the switch value. And this will test if the expression value is equal to the number 1. I'll press tab to move to the if match parameter. And this is what will be returned if the expression equals 1. I'll type in the text absolutely in double quotes. So how do I test for the remaining numbers, 2, 3, and 4? Well, if I add a comma after the if match parameter, numbers adds a new parameter to the function. This is called default or switch value. So this has two possible meanings. Let's just ignore the default portion for the time being and use this parameter as an additional switch value. Now we already tested for one, so in this parameter, I'll test for two. So I'll type in two and then a comma, and that brings up the if match parameter. So if the value is two, I want to display the text maybe. So I'll type that in right now in double quotes. So the pattern here with the switch function is it has a parameter to test, which is the expression parameter, and that's followed by parameter pairs, the switch value and the if match parameters. Let's add a third pair. I'll type in another comma and enter in three for the switch value, and then one more comma and enter in probably not in double quotes, and then another comma for the last pair, type in the number four, and one more comma for the if match, and type in the word never in double quotes. So we're done testing all of the possible values that we're concerned with. But what happens if a value exists outside of this range, this one to four range? The switch function requires a default value. So if I type in another comma, we get that default or switch value parameter. A moment ago, I said, let's ignore the default portion of this. Now we're gonna use it. This parameter can either start another pair of switch values or it doubles as the default value. And how that works is if I don't add an if match parameter by typing in another comma, then numbers assumes that this is the default value to display if no match is found with any of the switch values. So I'll just type in a hyphen in double quotes, and that's it for this statement. I'll just press return, and I'm going to immediately copy this formula to the rest of the cells in this column. So let's go over the results. So whenever we see a one, we should see the word absolutely. And if we see a two, it should display the word maybe. And three, it displays the phrase probably not. And four will display the word never. And that all seems to work. But we do have one with a hyphen, which is the default value. And that's because the value zero does not match any of the possible switch values. So it defaults to the hyphen. So that was a switch function with numerical data. Now let's try one with text. It actually works the same way. In the next column called log event, I have some cells containing pop-up menus. Clicking any one of these, you can see the available items in the pop-up. Now let's say we wanted to categorize these log events into three category groupings, phone calls, development, and administrative. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. You could use the if function, for example, but this tutorial is on the switch function, so that's what we're gonna use instead. 
In the log event switch column, I'll type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. And then I'll type in the function name switch and press return. For the expression, I'm going to select the first log event cell and then press the tab key to move over to the switch value parameter. So we need to test for every possible value of this pop-up. I already saved a screenshot of the values so I can refer back to them. So I want to add these switch values. The first one is conference call. So I'll add that in as the first switch value. And as always, all entered text in formulas should be in double quotes. So I'll press tab to move to the if match parameter and enter the word call in double quotes. And that's just short for phone call. Then add a comma and type in development as another switch value. Another comma and type in the word dev, short for development. And I'll keep going, another comma and enter in the next pair, documentation. And I'll also set the if match value to dev because I'm assuming documentation is part of development. And the next pair, internal call, if match is call, and then support call, also call, then meeting, and if match should be admin, and miscellaneous, also as admin. And just like the last example, one final comma and type in the hyphen in double quotes as the default value. If I press return, it displays call because we specified that the if match value should be call if the expression is equal to support call. I'll copy this formula to the remainder of the cells. And you can see that all of the log events now have this category. Notice that the blank event displays as a hyphen, which is the default value, because a blank value didn't have any equivalent switch values in the switch function. So that seems pretty straightforward. But one more question though, does switch allow for the switch value to be an equation or another function, for example? Well, let's try it. So I'm gonna just type the number one in this next column. And in the adjacent column, I'll type in the equal sign and then the function name switch and press return. I'll select the cell containing the number one as the expression, press tab and then type greater than zero. I'll press tab again to go to the if match parameter and type in the phrase greater than zero in double quotes. Now I forgot to mention earlier that you have to have a default value. So I'll add that in now. So I'll type in a comma and then a hyphen in double quotes, just like we did previously. Then I'll press return and that gives us an error. So if I click on the error, it says that the formula contains a syntax error, which just means that numbers doesn't understand what we were typing. There's something in the formula that doesn't make sense to numbers. So it would appear that the greater than zero equation is not allowed. I'll try putting that in quotes to see if that works. I'll double click to edit the formula and add double quotes around that equation. I'll press return and now it displays a hyphen. Well, I suspect that's because the number one doesn't match the greater than zero text. What I mean is it's comparing the text literally. So if it sees one as text, that certainly doesn't match the text greater than zero. So that's why the default value of hyphen is displayed. I'll confirm that suspicion by typing in greater than zero in the cell containing the expression. And now the switch function displays the phrase greater than zero because there is now a text match. So it appears that the switch function only compares literal values and looks for exact matches. No other comparison operators are allowed. So I think that's it for the switch function. I believe I covered everything. I hope you found this helpful. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to help this channel grow. All input is appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.